like it. <laughs> All right, let's go. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jill Coyle, and I am proud and honored to be on the stage because it is the first and last only time that I'll be coming ahead of Bodie Miller. <laughs> but besides coming in first place today, I'm also here to talk about agile marketing in weather-dependent industries. So I want to tell you guys a little story today. Last year, I booked my bucket list trip to Japan. Experience Japanuary. I think we can all relate here. Uh, but it didn't really go as planned as I would hope. See, I live in Vail, Colorado, where getting to the Denver International Airport can sometimes be a hefty task. There's two strenuous mountain passes that you have to cross over, so if any weather is coming in, your travel plans can completely be derailed. But I wanted to make it to Japan. So I had, my plan looked great on paper. Basically, I had to get into the airport shuttle, make it to the airport hotel, wake up, go through security, get my butt in the airplane, take an Ambien, kick it back with a little whiskey, arrive in Japan. Being a good marketer, I had my end goal, my KPIs in place to be sure I was going to hit it. What does this have to do with your marketing strategy? Well, my travel plans suddenly became derailed because of unforeseen weather, where I had to problem solve, think on my feet, and re-strategize. Marketing, plan, marketing planning in our industry is very similar. Weather can change our entire plan. Being agile means that you are fluid, you're flexible, you're able to adjust. Agile marketing means that you have a very strong A game going into the season, thank you, uh, but just a strong B and C game and ready, willing, and eager to put it in place if something happens. So like I said, weather was a huge factor on my travel plans. Vail Pass shut down, there's a whiteout storm, avalanche mitigation, and so much snowfall that the plows couldn't keep up. I just had to wait to see if I was even going to make it. Traditionally, marketing plans have been set up like this. Ramp up at the beginning of the season, kind of plateau, and then ramp down at the end of the season. You put it in place, you present it to your marketing committee or your board, you get the sign-off, you just monitor it to be sure that it's successful. But what happens if, let's say, we have low snow? That plan isn't really set up in your favor. Where today, we have technology where our marketing plans can look more like this. Snow's coming in, ramp up your spend. Snow's going away, hold and reserve those funds. So when I was sitting on that shuttle to the airport, and they said that it was canceled for the remainder of the night, I immediately had to re-strategize. So I looked at the cards that I was holding, and my ace in the hole was that I had a way back to my car. So I could go four hours around Vail Pass, make it back on I-70 to Denver. Well, how, I bet you're all questioning, how do I do this with my marketing strategy? It's a lot easier to say than do sometimes. Well, I have three takeaways today that I hope we all remember when we go into our peak seasons. One, we've always done it this way is a killer term in marketing. Signing on the dotted line just because it's something that we've always done and we have no idea what's in store for us for the remainder of the season. Number two, partner with someone, whether it be a media platform, media vendor, or an agency, where you can look, work within the week, like open snow's forecast. If snow's coming in at the end of the week, we can do, let's say, a ski and stay package. Not coming, how can, what else can we promote? And number three, have what I like to call a powder box fund. And this is a portion of your budget, let's say 10%, where you can try new and innovative things that you really believe would work and you want to give it a try. And if it fails or doesn't work out in your favor, it doesn't really matter, it's 10%. At the end of the season, our marketing plan ends up looking a little bit more like this, a little chaos, controlled chaos, but scribbles from start to the end. It's not that linear line that we were hoping for, and that's all right. So I arrived in Japan. Here I am. The tunnel, Eisenhower Tunnel, opened back up. I floored it to the airport, threw my bags out of the car, parked in short-term parking, ran on to the flight just in time. And I wanted to tell you guys this story because I know that's not going to be the last hard travel experience that I have. Just like we can anticipate that this is not going to be the last low snow year we have. So how do we set up our plans to be ready for this, to adjust it, to be fluid, to be flexible, to be agile? I'm proposing, Bruce, that uh, MTS is in Japan next year. <laughs> I'll be attending. Thank you, guys. <laughs> 